What's going on everybody? Metaverse Josh here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a world in Spatial using their creator toolkit powered by Unity. Um, but just to get started, I thought you know it'd be good to be create a world in Spatial, sort of like a classroom where people could go in to the Metaverse to learn how to build the Metaverse. Uh, and so I thought, hey, how cool would that be to actually capture my progress in making this world um, and use it as an instructional video? So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so for those of you that don't know much about um, Spatial or Unity, um, this is the video for you. So starting off, uh, if you're new to Spatial, um, all you need to do to uh, get into Spatial is to create an account um, using your Google, Microsoft, or MetaMask, or your email account, whatever you want. So go ahead and start by doing that. Log into Spatial, grab their uh, toolkit by going to spatial.io slash toolkit, and then uh, click Get Started. You'll get here. You'll want to grab the Getting Starter with uh, Started with a Starter Template link there, and uh, then start with Step 1. First, you'll want to install Unity using the Unity Hub. Um, so go ahead and get Unity Hub by clicking the link here under Step 1. Uh, when you install Unity Hub, uh, which is easy. You can just paste this link into your browser once um, you have Unity Hub installed, and this will give you the 2021.3.8 F1 version, which is the version of, that works with Spatial as of making this video. Um, and then when you're installing that, you'll want to make sure you include the WebGL build support. Um, so pause the video if you need some time to do that. Uh, but once you get done installing Unity Hub and Unity version 2021.3.8F1 using this information, then move on to step two. One week later. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is click the click here button to download the starter template. That's going to download um, this uh, template zip file into your downloads folder, wherever that is. Um, so once that's done, we're going to launch it. Um, and we're going to extract that to uh, wherever um, your project uh, files are. So I have all my project files in this folder here. So I'm just going to extract that um, to my project folder. And once that's done, you can rename it to whatever you'd like. So in this case, uh, since I'm turning my project into a classroom, I'm just going to rename it to uh, classroom. It can be whatever you want. Um, so now that that's done, <clears throat> I'm going to open up Unity Hub, and that's what this is. We're going to go to Open. You're going to browse to wherever your project file is that you just extracted. Um, so for me, that's going to be under uh, Unity Projects and Alt Space, no, sorry, Spatial Projects, and then Classroom. So we're going to hit Open. Now this is going to open up the project file. Uh, that can take a minute. So we're going to go back to here. And so knowing that I want to create a classroom, I'm not a, uh, a huge 3D modeler, so I try to get stuff from Sketchfab if I can. Um, and so this is free, and I found this classroom that I like. So I went ahead and downloaded that model. Um, what you're looking for is a model that's either an OBJ or FBX format. That's what Unity likes, so try to find that. You can convert it using Uni or, uh, Blender, I'm sorry. Uh, you can convert it using Blender, but uh, that is an extra step that I'll go into uh, on another video. So try to find something that's FBX or OBJ. Um, I've already done that. And so now um, what you can do is once you download those files, uh, I'm going to show you in my downloads folder here. I already have this lecture hall downloaded and I've extracted it. And, and so now I have the uh, source files and textures for that model. So I'm going to add that to my project um, when I get everything loaded in. So it's still loading as you can see. Again, this can take just a few minutes. Uh, so don't be alarmed if the first time you import the uh, Creator Toolkit template uh, files that it takes a minute. And I'm going to show you how um, to import your own assets instead of using the um, example uh, assets that are in there. And so to clean things up and make things a little bit easier, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to get rid of the example files right away. So none of that's taking up um, space in my project, and it's not uh, cluttering up <clears throat> um, you know, when I'm looking for files. 
uh, in, inside of my project. So three weeks later. Okay, so now we have um, the project loaded up, and so it's it's got it's empty. We're gonna delete the examples uh, folder out of here because we don't need that. Again, you don't have to, uh, but I do, just to kind of clean things up a tad. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna create a uh, a folder in here, and I'm just gonna call it. Um, lecture hall assets and the reason why I do that is because as you start to build things in unity this uh, top level assets folder becomes very cluttered if you just throw everything in there so I try to kind of keep things in folders so here you know I have this assets folder uh, for my lecture hall and I'm just gonna take those files that I downloaded from sketchfab and I'm gonna just drop it right there into my into my project Now this can take just a minute, um, depending on the amount of files that you're trying to import into Unity. Um, you can see here this error is basically just telling me that I have some normal textures in here that are not being recognized as normals, and I can fix that. So I'm going to do that now. Your files may not tell you that, but uh, if it does, it's okay to hit fix. So next, I want to go to the source. That's going to show me um, the model, the classroom model that I have. Now the first thing I want to do, and I'll show you an example of this, um, but I'll show you why you want to do this first. I'm just going to throw my model into the hierarchy here, and there it is inside my scene. Now the first thing I'm going to notice is if I want to try to edit any of these materials, they are completely uneditable. And that's because it's using the built-in material, and I can't edit those. So the first thing I want to do, I'm just going to get rid of this in the scene. So what we'll want to do is click the model go to in the inspector window here on the right you want to go to materials you are going to go to extract materials and you're going to want to create a folder inside of your um, lecture hall assets folders where I've got mine but you, you know whatever you called yours you want to create a folder called materials you want to select that folder and it will extract all the materials inside of that model into your materials folder so I'm going to go back here there's my materials folder you see they don't have any textures on them, but there they are. And so now, if I go and add this to my hierarchy, um, I can actually edit these materials now. And so um, you'll see the base map um, is there for the floor at least. It looks like it did find um, some of these textures. So that's kind of neat. Um, but for the most part, it did not. And so what you'll have to do uh, from here is match up the materials, um, or the, I'm sorry, the textures to the materials that you have. And so inside my textures folder, I have a ton of materials. Um, see, like this one says upper mold. I have, uh, I'm sorry, I have textures in here. And in the materials folder, I have materials. Now here's one called upper mold. So this is going to be pretty easy. I can just search for upper mold in here. Now again, this may not always be this way, depending on how the person created the model. The textures match the materials here, so this is going to be very easy for me to match these up. Um, you can see roughness, uh, normal, uh, metallic. You know, some of these they match up to things in here that you can match them up to. So in this case, um, this one's called upper molding. So now that's my metallic, so I can put that in there. Now what metallic is? This just lets you choose how smooth the material looks, and you can kind of see what it makes it do in this uh, preview window here. And I don't, you know, know if I want that smooth looking or not. So usually I just slide this down until I get everything textured, and then I kind of change the way I want it to look. So in here, um, once once I get all this matched up, you'll start to see some of this come to light. So I'm going to try to go through this. I might speed the video up a tad uh, here in just a second so that we can get through it quickly. Um, but for you, you may not have to do this much texturing. I'm just going to kind of go through it to show you how it looks. Um, so let's look at some of the other textures here. Um, got one called door props. Let's go into the materials again. Um, door props. That's easy enough. Search for door props. There's the base, All right? Metallic. Uh, there's the metallic one. Okay, we're just gonna see these are. This looks like uh, some of the hinges here, the pieces of the door. So we can choose how smooth we want that to look. So that looks fine to me. 
Um, let's see. So again, we just go through the different materials, looking for a texture that matches up. Um, so there's the base. There's the uh, metallic. So that was the desk texture there. Um, and so I'm just going to go through these really quickly without um, saying too much more so I can speed the video up. And then after we get done with the textures here, um, I'm going to show you how to um, go through some of the things that you'll want to check on before you upload your, your world. So uh, let's get done with the texturing and then we'll move on. Okay, so now we have all the textures loaded in here, and I'm going to show you how to upload this um, to Spatial now. So there's a few things that before we can get our world into uh, even a sandbox, we've got to make sure that uh, a few things are happening here. So the first thing uh, is that we have to have some sort of spawn location. You know, people have to have the ability to get in here somehow. And so when we go to test, it's going to bring up... Um, a few of these things. So the first thing I've got to do is save my scene, obviously. So um, inside the assets folder, I'm just going to create another folder and call it scenes. Um, and then I'm going to call this one classroom. Um, and so it's going to tell us, hey, there's an error. And so the first error is that the package config has a variant with no scene assigned. So what that means is under publishing, um, you have the act active package, which you can name to whatever you want. I'm just going to call mine classroom. And um, I'm going to name this uh, classroom as well. And then the scene, I'm going to select it. And you also have to create a thumbnail for it um, before you can, you can publish it. But I'm going to wait for that. Um, and so next, if I hit test again, now it's going to tell me it's a different one. Um, package config has a variant index with no thumbnail assigned. So I guess I have to go ahead and do that now. So uh, I need a thumbnail. And I'm just going to use the snipping tool to create a thumbnail um, since I don't really have uh, one yet. So I'm going to save that um, in my assets folder here. So I'm going to grab the path and let's put that in there. We're going to call it thumb for now. So I'm going to go back into the publishing. Under thumbnail, we're just going to search for that picture. Uh, actually, it's not showing up yet. Let's see. Maybe I... Oh, sorry. I'm, I didn't move it into the Assets folder. So you're only going to see files that are inside the Assets folder when you search. So now that I did actually save it in the correct spot, it's showing up now. There's my thumbnail. So I'm going to go to Test again. See, this time, uh, no thumbnail camera found in the scene. Here's what's cool, though. Any of these uh, errors that have it... Uh, auto fix available go ahead and hit that what that just did is it created um let's get rid of that filter in my scene it created a thumbnail camera so i'm going to double click it and see where it's at so you can see with the thumbnail camera clicked i can now get a preview of what it's going to see so i can move it around um, and i'm just going to move the camera kind of in a spot where it can kind of see what's going on um so there's like the front of the classroom with some chairs. Um, that looks like a decent spot. So this is what people are going to see when they're looking at portals um, or something, or, you know, the thumbnail when it, uh, you, you post your spatial link on a website. Uh, this is what, uh, this or the entrance point I've found is, is the view they see when that's put in there. So I'm going to put that there. 
Uh, go to test scene again. This time it's probably going to tell us that there's no entrance point. Again, auto fix. This time you're going to see it created an entrance point for me. Now, here's what you're going to find, though, with the entrance point. You have to have this entrance point over a spot with a collider. And what that means is if you don't have a collider on your object in Unity, then that means the character can go through it. So, in other words, if the floor doesn't have a collider, they're just going to spawn in and fall through the floor. So we want to, at the very least, add a collider to whatever mesh has the floor. So this, I've clicked in my scene where the floor is. Uh, the person that made this model is was... Uh, you know, gracious enough to uh, label that for me. So I'm going to go to Add Component, and what I'm looking for is a Mesh Collider. Um, so you can search for that there. Another way to do that is if you click here, you can go to uh, Component, and then Physics uh, to, no, I'm sorry, it is Physics, and then go to Mesh Collider. So you, I only want to add one, so I just did that. Um, and so now you're not going to fall through the floor anymore. Now, you may want to put colliders on some other things, like the desks, or the chairs, or the walls, so they can't just fall out of the room. But I'm just going to leave that out for now, just so you can get an example of what that's like. Um, but I've at least got, again, a collider on the floor. And so now, my, um, my uh, entrance point, you can see it has a dot underneath it that kind of gives you an idea of where they will land. So if I try to publish this without a collider there, it's going to give me another error. Uh, but since I did that, it's not going to tell me that this time. And so the last error is going to be that there's an unsupported component type. I'm not sure why um, the audio listener is on the camera other than I think it's there maybe by default. But I know that for whatever reason, uh, Spatial doesn't want you to upload your camera with the audio listener on it. So um, you pretty much have to uh, get rid of this every time. Uh, I think it's on the main camera here. Yeah. So a couple things you can do. You can just get rid of the main camera if you want, um, since you have a thumbnail camera here. Uh, or you can just remove this audio listener component. So you can do that, or you can get rid of your main camera. Either one is fine. Um, and so now I think I've met all the requirements to testing my uh, build in a sandbox. Um yeah, so this is I've seen this before where it says the bundle is too large, which is it's over 100 megs. You can publish um, up to I think they actually took the maybe it's like 500 megs I think. Um, so we're not gonna have a problem publishing, but if you have this problem testing with sandbox, don't worry. Um, you can continue to to work on it. One thing I know that uh, is not gonna work right once it's published is if um, if you haven't baked your lighting yet. I'm gonna do that again in another video. Um, but for now, if you are having trouble with lighting, um, one of the things that you can do um, to give yourself some lighting uh, really quickly is you can um, you can select all of the objects in your model like this here, and you can just turn off cast shadow. Okay, and then what that's going to do is it's going to allow your directional light that's in your scene to just shine light, real time light on everything. Um, and so you're not, it's going to look really bad like this right here because there's no shadows at this point, but we can bake that lighting later. That's going to be in another video. Um, and so the idea of this classroom is that we're going to go through these different videos that I make, um, so that people can, uh, get an idea of how to do all these different things in spatial. But for now, video number one, we're going to keep it simple. Uh, we're just going to upload this scene just like this. So we're going to hit publish and... And publish again and so this time it's actually going to build these files and publish them to spatial and this part uh, guys I've seen it take five minutes I've seen it take hours um, there's really no telling how long this is going to take um, but to, to save you guys the trouble I'm actually just going to pause the video uh, and then pick it back up after this goes live so I can show you all uh, what it's going to look like so again, don't be worried if, you're, uh, if your upload doesn't work for Sandbox because it's limited at 100 megs. You're going to be fine. Uh, see, I uploaded this. It says it can take as little as 15 minutes, um, but it can take uh, you know several hours. I've seen that happen too. So you will receive an email notification. That's cool. So when your scene is done uploading and it's ready, you'll see that. 
Um, but until then, we can't do anything else, so we'll just wait until, uh, if you're following along in the video and you've uploaded your scene, wait until you get that email notification saying that your scene is ready, and then we're going to go create a package. Six months later. What's going on, everybody? We're back. Uh, the package is finished uploading, and we're going to go to create a space. I'm back on the spatial.io website. Um, if it's finished uploading, you're going to be able to... Um, Create a space using your creator toolkit items here. It used to say packages. Um, I guess they've changed that to say creator toolkit. Uh, and so underneath here, you're going to see my classroom that I uploaded. So I'm going to start with that. Um, and that's going to create a space using your uh, package that you just uploaded as a template. And so once that's done, uh, you'll load right into the world um, wherever your, uh, your entrance point was that we set earlier. And so, and they're just going to call it uh, by default your name and then like hi fi space or lo fi, whatever area. Um, you know, it's usually something like that. So here we are. We're in this, um, this classroom that I've made. And you can see the lighting isn't the best um, because, again, I just kind of uh, allowed the lighting to kind of come through without making shadows. But you can see there's no lighting on the. Uh, the ceiling there or anything like that because it's not bouncing off of any of the objects or being created from inside this scene. It's it's uh, it's coming from the directional light outside. So this isn't going to be the finished product, but you can see that we do have a scene uploaded and I can walk around. Um, and remember, we didn't put colliders on the walls, so I, I can just walk right out and fall um, to my instant respawn uh, back in here. And so that's why you want to put colliders on stuff. You see I can walk through the tables and all, but the basic uh, world is uploaded and here it is. Uh, and so that's it. That's uh, all you have to do uh, to get started with the Unity uh, Creator Toolkit and get a world uploaded. Now from here, you'll want to put some finishing touches on the, your world, right? You're going to want to create colliders where they need to be. Um, there's seat hot spots that you can add to these chairs so that you can sit in them. Um, there's all sorts of different things you can do with the texturing to make this look better. And then, of course, your scene lighting, which makes the, uh, the scene look so much better when you add lights and bake your lighting. Uh, so we're going to be going over all of that uh, in future lessons. But I hope that this is enough to get you started in Spatial, uh, uploading um, your own worlds and your own creations into uh, Spatial using that Creator Toolkit. And, uh, and hopefully in, in future lessons, you can learn how to do a whole lot more. Thanks for uh, tuning in. This is Metaverse Josh uh, with the first ever um, Spatial Creator Toolkit lesson. Uh, more to come. Thanks for watching, everybody.